Today's practice is to open up the diaphragm and to relax around the abdomen. So it's a gentle practice, some arm movements, um, and just making sure that we, we don't hold too much tension. Okay? So if you're sitting in cross legs, let's start by changing the cross of the legs. Because we're creatures of habit, and I am definitely a creature of habit. So to begin with, just rest your hands on your belly, close your eyes and observe that you're breathing in a nice, full, deep breath. So you'll notice the tissues of the abdomen will, will change their shape as you breathe in and out. And then compact your hips. So just allow the legs to do the work. I'll just let some of my hair. Allow the legs to do the work whilst the abdomen still stays relaxed. And the analogy I'm going to give you is imagine how much work a swan's feet are doing to allow them to glide effortlessly on a, on a lake. Now place your fingertips, if you're sitting on a bolster, place your fingertips on the sides of a bolster. If you're sitting flat, onto the floor. If you've got long arms like me, you can just take the fingertips to the floor there. And then just sit back again so that the head is balanced and the shoulders are balanced over the pelvis. So you're not pushing the lower back in too far and again that you've still got that support of the pelvis by drawing the knees just think about drawing the knees back in towards the hips a little and let the breath be smooth enough that you can feel the reflection of the diaphragm so we're not putting stress into our practice which can happen sometimes when we're against a time frame Release the tissues on the back of the neck. Let the eyes sink and let the breath balance itself out. Release the head down. Open the eyes and raise the head up. Okay, so as you sit cross legs, you should feel there's a firmness in the hips here and that there's also a, a connectedness from the legs back into the hips, yeah? You don't want to feel any hardness or any holding patterns in and around this area, so it's nice and soft. We're going to come to kneeling next. So if you can, sit your feet on your heels. If you can't, sit yourself up on a chair or do the opposite cross of the legs. And then bring the hands onto the, onto the thighs or onto the cross cross legs onto the thighs there, press the hands down a little bit and try and lift the trunk up so you've got the, the hips and the shoulders, they're in a nice line, you've got line through the waist, press the hands down, look directly forwards and again just observe, observe the diaphragm and you're not just breathing into the diaphragm, you're also breathing up into the chest. Keep the eyes looking directly forwards. Keep the knees squeezing together. And then release, okay? Those of you that can, you're gonna now separate the feet and comfort comfortably sit down between your feet, okay? If that's too much on the knees, take a brick. We're not holding it. Those of you in cross legs, we're not going to hold it for very long, I promise. Um, take a brick and sit on it high or sit on it low um, or some foam pads or a bolster. Again, you're looking for that comfortable space. Now, as we sit, we again want to feel that the spine is, is lifting up. That is, you know, there is a natural lumbar curve but there's an evenness through that lift. There's no area that's presenting more. Let the shoulder blades rest into the back. Know that the back is not square, the rib cage is not square. It's an organic rib cage shape. Again, make sure that you're not holding the ribs hard, you're not poking them forward, so the breath is coming into the box of the chest, but also into the softness of the diaphragm.
Relax the eyes, release the tongue. And then release. Okay? The next thing we're going to do is uh, Supta Baddha Konasan. I have no belts, so I have just this, this one brick with me today. The sticky mats should enable us to, to take this pose. And this is to bring a nice widening sensation across the hips, across the abdomen. If you need to support, put something underneath both, both thighs, like I've shown you with the brick here, okay? And you want to have the feet in as close as possible. Um, I just undo my hair. If you can hold the feet, that will give you a much broader chest. But don't just flare these lower ribs forwards. So the floating ribs, don't get confused, the floating ribs are at the back, and the ribs at the front that have a tendency to poke forwards, they're called the false ribs, yeah? So just know that you want this area here not to poke forwards too much, so the breath is wide as well as deep. opening up the armpit chest and we just hold this again for a few breaths. Lower back feels nice and long and comfortable and prop yourself up where needed. If you need some support under your head, if your head feels like it's being thrown back, please put some there. And observe that there's no holding pattern there in the abdomen in and around the waist, the lower back. And then use your hands, roll the feet in towards each other, draw the knees together. Lengthen the lower back, and then just to introduce the movement to the shoulders, clasp the elbows, and draw the arms up and over the head. Observe the breath in the abdomen. Observe the breath in the sides of the chest. Lower the arms down. Change the clasp of the elbows and take the arms up and over the head again. Legs are still bent. If it's comfortable to do so, step one leg away. So you're doing a supine tadasan, and then step the other leg away. Work the legs strongly, so you stretch the heels away, press the buttocks towards the hips, press the buttocks forwards, press the thighs back. So the legs are working, but there's still that soft abdominal sensation as you breathe in and breathe out. Make sure the face is relaxed, you're not frowning, concentrating, relax those eyes. Now again, if the shoulders are happy to do so, stretch the arms up and over the head. And go for full length, but with full breath awareness. Don't let the throat become tight. Keep the legs firm and active, without pressing just the knees to the floor. Don't allow the heels to come off the floor. Keep the heels pressurised to the floor. And you should just notice a rhythmic, beautiful action through the diaphragmatic area, up into the chest, wide into the chest. What about the back chest? Don't need the lungs go back there too. Back waist should be responding. And then release the hands down, place your hands on your belly. Activate the thighs again, roll the thighs in, slightly bend the knees, press into the heels, then bend the legs up. Roll to your right side. All the way over. Come over into Adho Mukha Virasan, if you can, otherwise into what I've named before as puppy pose. So either here if your knees allow, or else here. If those two are too much, you can come straight into Adho uh, Mukhoshvanasana, downward facing dog, dog head down. Observe the breath. 
the gentle rhythmicity of the breath. Feel how it's coming across the back of your body. Don't overstretch. Armpits nice and open. Now, if you just want to, if you don't understand the words cupping your hands, um, just look up at the screen. But otherwise, I'm going to ask you to cup your hands so the fingers and the thumbs come onto the onto the mat, and the hands make a beautiful arch. So they look like a like the top of a wine glass. So I should say wine glass your hands, like a goblet. Goblet your hands. And then open the armpit chest more. Breathe. And lengthen the backs of the wrists, the fronts of the wrists away from the head and feel how that stretches the very upper chest. You might have even heard my voice has just changed. <laughs> now look forwards, come forwards. Adho Mukha Virasana, dog head down, downward facing dog. And don't allow the tummy to tuck too much. Let the breath still be whole, wide, smooth, even. We're not holding this for very long. Look forwards, step forwards. Uttanasan, half Uttanasan. Observe the breath. Now this is important, this is so important. Keep the abdomen broad and wide as you exhale. Working the legs, letting the breath still remain wide and smooth, abdomen soft, broad. Release the head down. Relax the eyes, release the tongue. Work the legs. Inhale, look forwards. Now connect the tailbone into the heels. Use your buttocks to inhale and stand up, hands to waist. Inhale, stand up. So we've come to standing. Just tie my hair back up again. Bring your feet into Tadasan. As you stand in Tadasan, bring the weight back into the heels. Lengthen the arms down and just think of how BKS Iyengar stands in Tadasan in um, Light on Yoga. His belly, his abdomen is soft, but he's very firm from the hips. So firm the hips, firm the buttocks, press the thighs back, inner thighs up into the groins, and you'll feel the pelvic floor naturally lift. Lengthen the arms down out of the shoulders. Now feel the breath if you step the legs apart. Feel the abdomen, feel the difference in the body. Close the eyes if that helps. Weight back into the heels till you feel the thighs want to respond. Pressurize the buttocks forwards. Inhale, raise the arms up and out to the side and then up above your head. Feel the breath. Lower the arms down and out to the side and observe how the standing comes, how Tadasan feels. Now bring the legs together. Feel now the difference in the lower abdomen here. Raise the arms up. Now turn the palms up and take the arms up and over the head again. This is the air, the breath comes through here. Keep this soft this area soft. Back of the neck, keep it soft so the arms draw down. And then lower the arms down. Raise the arms forwards and up. Now notice how the breath has changed its shape within your body. Exhale, lower the arms down. Take the feet hip distance apart. I'm slowly edging off my mat here. Feet apart. So I like to think of myself as a rectangle. So from the inner ankles, I'm aware of the, the line of my hips up through 
the nipple band I suppose and then through the armpits and right up into my arms stretching those arms up observe how that's different and then exhale lower the arms down for those of you with tighter shoulders uh, Chris Noon <laughs> you're one of them this is for you okay I want you to do what I call um, Morecambe and Wise. If you've never seen Morecambe and Wise, or I think if you're under 30, you won't, probably won't know what I'm talking about. You'll need to Google it. But at the end of their show, they used to do this. And what happens is if we can't do Gomakas and arms, we end up berating ourselves. Oh, I can't do it. I'm rubbish at this. But actually, to be able to get there, we've got to embrace the movements. And so, to begin with, just see where the hands will come without any... Um, any effort at all. So just touch the back of your pelvis, the palm faces out, and the back of your head, palm faces in. And then change. And then to carry on with the theme, observe the breath. So you just keep breathing and the breath will reflect the movement. And then release. And then we deepen it so you can stretch the arms out. Stretch one arm up, one arm down. It's a diagonal stretch. Bend the elbows and see if you combined. Okay, so I'm going to spin around and do the other side. Release the arms and bring the arms down. Okay, but it will look like we're doing the same side. Raise the arms up. Yeah, and then bend the elbows and bring the hands in. And then release. And what's important is that upward arm um, before it becomes the downward arm. So what I want you to notice now is you'll have one stiffer shoulder. This is my stiffer shoulder. And I noticed that if I took the arm up and I thought about keeping the length through the side of the rib, it kept my shoulder joint in the right place or better. And then so I'd keep that action, take the arm back and think, can I still keep that openness of chest? Then bend the arm back and it felt so much easier to bring it into its space. And the hand comes up a little higher, the arm releases a little more and then take the other arm up and bind. Now observe the breath, the diaphragm. Legs firm. And see which you prefer. Do you prefer the feet together or do you prefer the feet apart? Because it's your practice and it gives us something different. If you're feeling tight in the abdomen, have the feet apart, it makes such a difference. And then stretch the arm up, stretch the lower arm down, and bring the hands back into Tadas and lift the chest. So these small movements become meditation in themselves. So we're gonna put the, your right arm in next. So you're gonna stretch up, because this is possibly your tighter side. Arm in, and just think about the lift here. Swoop the arm down, bring it back, open the chest so this area coils up, bend the elbow, bring it up the back. Take your left arm, stretch it up, and then bend the elbow and bind. Observe the breath. Nice wide, smooth breath. Into the box of the chest and know that there's also to the back of the chest. We always, because this is the bit that we can see, this is the bit that we breathe into, but there's also this chest back here. The lungs come back here. We're 3D, it's amazing. What technology. And then release the arm up, release the arm down, and come back to Tadasana. And observe the breath. So when we bring the arms up for Garudasana arms, I discovered that when people do the cross, one side goes really well, and then the other side kind of comes up and does this. So I've taken to teaching it just recently, bringing the arms into the midline, so let's separate the feet to make it a little bit easier. Bring the arms into the midline. Know that your right arm is gonna slide across just a little bit, shoulders down, and this arm is gonna wrap around and bring the hands in. Now, the very nature of this brings a nice breadth to the back of the chest. So observe that. Fingers facing forwards, 
If this is too much, you can always just hold the elbows. If you release your head down again, that brings some beautiful breath to the back of the chest. Relax the eyes, release the tongue. Weight back in the heels, make sure you're not holding around the diaphragm tight and then release the arms down. Now as you stand there, take a good breath in and notice how the, it just feels more balloon-like in the up in that area but it's as if you can feel the breath entering this space. So let's try the other side now. So bring the arms back into the midline. So it's your left arm that's going to stay in the middle now. Slide the left arm to come right into the midline. Bring the right arm underneath, snake it, wrap it round until the fingers of the right hand come onto the palm of the left hand. Drop the shoulders. If I turn sideways again, the shoulders move against that action. The hands move away. Allow the breath to come into the chest. And again, if that's too much, just hold the elbows and become aware of that sensation there. Weight back in the heels. So you can feel that the legs are holding the pelvis and the pelvis is holding the upper body. The spine is growing out of the pelvis. Crown of the head towards the ceiling or the sky, depending whether you're inside or outside. Exhale, release and bring the arms down. Observe the breath. Badanguyas. Interlace the fingers, push the palms away. Now if that's too much on your hands, say you've got Dupuytron's contracture, if you don't know what that is, um, you don't need to worry about it, but it's when the fingers curl around a little bit like that and then the, the interlace becomes very tight. If that's the case, then just press here and raise the arm up. It's quite common in Cornwall, it seems. So you can just hold there, so we're not, we're not damaging any other part of the body to try and achieve something that's towards not so achievable. So we take, let the body speak to us, allow ourselves to, to be there. Lower the arms down. Those of you that can, change the interlace, otherwise change to the other hand and raise the arms up. Maybe your shoulders are too tight, if that's the case. You can put a belt around your wrists and just stretch them up this way or hold a brick and stretch it up. Oh, it's heaven. Lengthen the thumb side. Notice how that lifts the back of the chest. Lengthen the little finger side and stretch up. Soften the throat. Weight in the heels, arches lifted. And then release. I'm going to turn around. We've got Namaskarasan. Keep the legs firm. Center of the buttocks, move them down, press them forwards. So there's a pressure there. And there's a pressure back against the thighs as well. All right? Bring the hands to Namaskarasan to face down. And then you might decide that you're going to be a fist bumper. Yeah? And that you can still open the chest here. If you know that you don't need to fist bump, and you just want to say um, namaste behind your back, bring the hands, fingers down, and now turn the hands up and raise the arms up. I've got a magpie. Roll the shoulders back and open the elbows wide, legs firm, and allow the chest to open here. And it's still that coiling action up and over. So it's very similar to the Gomukhasan. Breathe. And then exhale, release. As you release, spread out the hands. I found that that really helps the wrist to recover much more quickly. Be aware that the breath feels nice and broad chest open, arms firm, stretching down, feet wide, kneecaps lifted, buttocks down. Observe the breath and then release. Back to Adho Mukhushvanasan.
observe the abdomen and lift the kneecaps top of the thighs up my tummy started gurgling look forwards step forwards carefully sit yourself down dandarsan so sit so that the body is directly, so the shoulders are directly over the hips. It might be a little bit further back than you otherwise might think. Sit yourself up on a blanket or a foam pad if you need to. You can use the fingertips to support the spine and aid the breath. And it's here where you start to notice if you have a tendency to hold the abdomen tight. So just observe that the breath is wide and smooth, legs are firm and supporting the pelvis, crown of the head going up. From here we're going to come back into um, Baddha Konasan. So bring the feet in a little bit, make sure they're in the centre of the mat. And then you can hotch your bottom towards the heels, soles of the feet come together. You're going to lie back down again using the props for your thighs if you need them. Arms wide, but no higher than your shoulders. So you want to have maybe the arms at about 45 degrees so that this area softens again. Abdominal area nice and soft. And then you can observe the breath. Fingers gently curled. This is such a lovely sequence, um, especially for the digestive system, because when we breath hold, we have a tendency to also, um, the digestive system reflects that. And so sometimes we can get a little bit stuck in that area, whether that's muscular tension, so the, the, the muscles around the waist, around the lower back, or whether that's actually the digestive system itself. And it's these simple things that we, we, we miss when we look for some of the, the bigger poses. And now place your hands. You can stay here for longer if it's feeling beneficial. Otherwise, place your hands underneath the thighs. Roll the knees in. Let the feet go out wide. Let the knees flop together. See how your lower back feels. See how the abdomen feels. And then if you're ready, you can just heel and toe the feet in towards each other, lengthen the legs away, releasing the thighs down completely to the floor. Feet flop out to the side. Make sure the lower back is comfortable. If it's not, re-bend your legs, tucking the shoulder blades in, giving yourself enough room to breathe. With the feet a little wider, the lower abdomen releases a little bit more. The hip flexors release a little bit more. Take some long, slow, smooth breaths in and out. Relaxing the face, relaxing the eyes and releasing the tongue. Allow the breath to be rhythmic, smooth, comfortable. Releasing any tension around the abdominal area. Releasing any tension around the throat. Releasing any tension around the face. Releasing any tension around the skull, the skull and the brain. Allowing yourself to release any tension around the mind. And then letting go of any emotions, any, any deep sense of held on to witness, if that makes sense. Anything that you just need to breathe out. Let the, let the abdomen breathe. Let the exhale let go. Let the inhale breathe in the new. Oh, 
breathe in the new and let go of the old. Release any tension held anywhere now. Resolving to let go of any patterns, any discomforts, but also admitting to the things that need to be supported. So if you're if you're needing to move your legs, change your leg position. If you're needing to adjust your shoulder blades, do so. So you can make yourself five to ten percent more comfortable within your own skin. The yoga journey is one step at a time. Let go. Accept. I'll repeat that one more time. Take a breath in, take a breath out. Let go, accept, and breathe. In your own time, when you're ready, let the legs bend up and roll to your right side supporting the head and if you have the time to rest here for a long while and it's comfortable please do observing the breath observing the relax of the face the release of the brain allowing any tension to just drain out of that right side of the body Check that you're not pushing the lumbar spine in too much. If you can make your legs 5 to 10% more comfortable, please do so. Let the head release completely. Relax the neck completely. Stay there for longer if you wish. You can roll to your left side. So carefully keep the head on the floor. Just gently roll over. Let's go to the left as well, just to change the things a little. Again, if you can stay here for longer, please do. Ask yourself, can I make myself 5 to 10% more comfortable? Observe the breath. Make sure the lower back feels long, the sacrum is comfortable. Let the head go, let the neck go. And then when you're ready, because we're now on the left side, look, press down with your right hand, turn the left hand underneath you and come up to a comfortable sitting position. I'm coming to kneeling, but you can come to cross legs. Sit yourself back. Bring the hands to Namaskarasana, this very sacred pose. Feel how the softness of the lower arm is resting along the line of the diaphragm. Let the breath release. Let the senses, the eyes, the tongue, skin on the face, release down, let the breath come into the body, become centred in your own space, your own skin, release and re relax the back of the neck down, the head down, the face down, be grateful for the gift of peace and the gift of breath and the gift of life. Release the hands, open the eyes, and raise the head up. Thank you.